Hello, my name is Josh Ramos, a Siemens Level and Wayne Application Engineer. Today we're going to be discussing what a dry solids flow meter. What you see here is the WF330 solids flow meter unit. In this unit we will demonstrate how to calibrate the unit. The first thing we need to do is to check the sensing plate. We do this by opening the doors and looking inside. After opening the door, look inside and make sure that the plate has no holes and that the liner on the plate is still intact. After you inspect the sensing plate, you will go over to the sensing head and remove the cover. Check to make sure that the interior is clean at this time. If the interior is not clean and has product around it, it could mean that one of the gaskets is torn or bad. First you want to check is the outer gasket and then the inner gasket to make sure there are no tears or cuts on either of the gaskets. Now after inspecting the gaskets, you're going to inspect the overload stop. It has two nuts that allows the unit to bottom out. Next we're going to inspect the leaf springs. The leaf springs should be flat and not bent. This one is what a leaf spring should look like versus the one that is bent. If one or more are bent, you need to replace them. There are four leaf springs. There are two at the top and two at the bottom. Next, we're going to move on to the range springs. You want to make sure that the large nut is tight and the three bolts. Next, we're going to check the fluid in the dampening bowl. When inspecting, make sure that the dampening bowl is 100% full with no bubbles. Please note that the fluid is clear in color. Also make sure that the two shipping bolts are removed from the dampening bowl disc. After you remove the two shipping bolts, make sure the aluminum disc is in the up position. After inspecting the fluid, you want to check the wiring on the LVDT card, which stands for Linear Variable Differential Transformer. This card is used to transfer the voltage to the LVDT. The LVDT card can be mounted internally or externally. If it is mounted externally, it is rated for explosion proof. Now we will talk about the LVDT itself. We need to check the voltage on the LVDT to make sure it is correct. You will need a voltmeter and set it to AC. The reading on the voltmeter should be 0.1 plus or minus 0.05 volts AC. If you're not getting 0.1 volts, then you will need to loosen up the core nut and adjust it by turning it clockwise or counterclockwise until you reach 0.1 volts. After achieving the 0.1 volt, lock the nut down into its place be aware when you tighten down the nut that the voltage can change while you do so. The last thing that we will inspect is the calibration wheel. Make sure it spins freely and it is not loose. Now we've done all of the inspection, we will move on to the calibration. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure the unit zeroes. If the unit is new and you're calibrating it for the first time, it will force you to do an initial zero. Then you will hit the enter button. It will start the zero calibration and you can see from the screen that it is counting up. When the calibration is finished, it will return to zero and you will hit the enter button to accept that value. After this, you will perform two to three routine checks. So let's move on to span calibration. When spanning, you must add a test weight. On this flow meter, you will need a string, preferably fishing line, to hang the test weight on. You will attach the string onto the bolt where the slot is, and then over the calibration wheel, and attach the test weight. Now we will start the span calibration by hitting the span button on the SF500. 
After this, hit the enter button. Please note, if it is a new unit, it will force you to do an initial span calibration. After initial span, you'll want to do two to three routine spans to make sure it repeats. Once the span calibration is complete, hit the enter button to set the span value. You can now go into the run mode by pushing the run button. Under rate, it should read what the test weight represents in tenths per hour. Now remove the test weight and string and store them away. Now that we have the unit zero and span, we need to do a material test to make sure that the unit is weighing correctly. After performing the material test, the material test could be off due to several factors. The factors may include, include airflow, bulk density of material, how far the material drops, the characteristics of the material, soft or hard, how the product is fed, or vacuum. Because of these conditions, you may have to do a span adjust. You will need to calculate the difference in percent in which the material load is off versus what the SF500 stays. By knowing the percent that the load is off, you can go change the span adjust by that percent, whether it is positive or negative. This concludes our calibration of the flow meter. Thank you for your attention. Hope this presentation has demonstrated the ease of calibrating the WF-330 and the SF-500. If you need any assistance, please contact our technical support at 1-800-333-7421.